Hello and welcome to another edition of Drop In Bombs with me, your host, Corey Baumeister. As always, brought to you by the lovely folks over at StarCityGames.com. Oh, it feels good to be back on the standard side of Magic, back on Arena. Throne of Eldraine is released now, so it is going to be beautiful standard arena content here for the foreseeable future. We're going to try to break it week in and week out, but unfortunately, my colleague, my older brother, already beat me to it. Brad Nelson um, broke it week one. This deck is insane. He played this in the fandom event here um, last weekend and just did incredibly well with it. I uh, picked it up, did some testing with it, and just basically couldn't lose. I would went on like a 24-2 and two streak or something over the weekend. I think this deck is the real deal. It's attacking the metagame at a way that's going over the top of it. Now, I do think people are starting to adapt a little bit to these blue-green X ramp strategies and uh, starting to kind of go over the top of even that playing stuff like Golos, playing stuff like Esper Stacks that kind of uh, beat it, but I'm not seeing a ton of that right now. So for now, it's kind of just Magical Christmas Land with Simic Ramp, and uh, I have to say, the deck is just really powerful. We get a lot of new tools in the form of Gilded Goose, Oko, Brazen Borrower, Bra Brazen Borrower, Wicked Wolf, Castle of Aaron Bridge, um, as our new Throne of Eldraine cards. Changes the dynamics of this Simic deck a lot from previous seasons. I wasn't the biggest fan, and I was pretty critical over the uh, Simic and Bant ramps, bef Simic or Bant ramp uh, decks in the past, because they had these kind of polarizing effects where they sometimes would curve out perfectly, have a turn three Nissa, things were great, these games were unlosable, but. Some draws would be you draw all your ramp cards or you draw all your late game uh, X spells or bigger payoff stuff and your deck doesn't function. Now, all of our Throne of Eldrain cards are kind of in our middle slot here, you know, right here. Um, and they really bridge the gap and make this just a good overall deck playing impactful and powerful spells each and every turn as well as still having the... Uh, capabilities to play these turn three nesses and other powerful effects like that. So I hope you all enjoy the game. You can fast forward to any of the matches with the links below as well as check out the deck tech at the end where I go more into detail on the cards, but I do give a, a hint or a way uh, some clues about the matches. So if you want no spoilers, watch these games first and check it out later. Enjoy. All right, everybody. Welcome to round one here with uh, Simic Ramp. Uh, looks like we're up against Awesome Rossum, Jonathan Rossum here, a phenomenal player, and I actually think I know what we're up against here. It might be a bit of a rough matchup, but we're going to see how it goes. Uh, as far as this hand goes, I think this hand is fine. We're missing our payoff, but still good enough to keep. Got to say hello to our friend and fellow Lotus Box teammate. All right, let's see what we can do. Okay, falls, and we, I, I'm 99% sure he's on Golos, a uh, deck that they have been absolutely loving lately, and rightfully so. I think the deck is very strong, so. We'll see how we can do up against this powerful deck. Now, we're hoping for a Nissa within the next couple of turns, because that's really where, uh, where we shine. That's really what's aggressive about this deck. So with this being the case and Brazen Bar not being that good, we're just going to start getting aggressive here. Not exactly what we're looking for right here. Really looking for a payoff, but... Alright, I guess we should play this in response. Brazen Borrower. Alright, Teferi likely to bounce something. Okay, stopping the Nissa from happening very likely. Not a great draw, of course. Uh, we have not drawn a spell. <laughs> That's usually not good when you don't draw spells. Okay, so we'll go here. But, I mean, one crisis unmulligans us from that kind of situation immediately because you draw so many cards here. All right, so Golos here would be quite good. 
They do run four of them, so I mean, a natural that they uh, curve off into a turn four Golos quite often. Then there's the field, and there's probably our chances of winning this game. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna attack. It's definitely not over yet. We're gonna need a, a big spell here somewhat soon. All right, we'll say go. All right, yeah, so just really looking for a Krasis, but I mean, if we get Krasis next turn, we get six mana from Castle. This adds two, so eight, nine, 10, 11. We could Krasis for nine. Wow, that's, uh, that's huge. We can get it if we can get it going. All right, Golos likely coming in. There's no reason not to. We shall take it. Okay, Beanstalk Giant, pretty nice. Even more Zombones. I have to say, I'm a big Golos fan. I think this deck is the real deal as well. And something I'm even going to be testing for uh, this week's tournament. All right. And another Golos. Okay, so that's going to get a second field. Now we're probably in a crisis or bust kind of thing, just because we don't have much time left. I mean, our only spell that we've drawn in five turns was just one Leaf Kindred, so... I mean, when you get these kind of draws, there's nothing you can do. That's just the problem with uh, ramp decks in general, the way they're built, um, is if you draw the right kind of your deck, um, it's amazing, but if you draw the wrong half of your deck, it, it tends to be pretty bad. And we kept a good hand where that had a good start, but we didn't really get any payoff here. All right, so we're just going to do this. This has us taking nine. I think that's okay for now. If we get a Krasis, we get enough life back where uh, we might not die to their attack, depending on what they do. All right, Fabled Passage here. Now this might even be too much for Krasis. So they can cast a 10-10. That's impressive. Oh, God, our Krasis is their own. That's way worse for us. All right, and that's game. Not much we can do when we uh, only draw our mana accelerant. All right, I like Agent against their giant creatures. Disdainful Stroke is quite good. Negate can be okay. It counters like Realm Cloak Giant to Fairy. Other than that, not too much. I think uh, Shifting Ceratops is pretty good. So Brazen Borrower is bad. Wicked Wolf is pretty bad as well. Um, Voracious Hydra is a little better just because it goes a lot bigger. Um, and you could just make a giant creature and win that way. So we'll go with one negate. Um, and I think this is what I want. I'm questioning one Oko being taken out for another negate, but I don't think that's good enough. I think we're set with these. Let's give it a shot. Okay, game two up against uh, Jonathan Awesome Rossum, one of my teammates and good friends. See if we can uh, settle it up, get to a game three here against him. All right, I'd love to play first. Ugh, this hand's bad. This hand is bad. Got a mulligan. If we had two lands, I mean, obviously this hand would be perfect, but we'll keep this one. Um... Now, I think we'll just get rid of the breeding pool. We just won't need it. <clears throat> so we're gonna start on the temple. Scry a castle. Okay, let's see how this is gonna play out. So we're gonna play a forest creature, and then the next turn, Paradise Druid, another forest. And then the turn after, we can go castle with, yeah, so okay. So if we leave this, we can go Crisis for five on turn four. But if we have any other land, we can just Crisis for four on turn four. And that's just as good. We draw the same amount of cards. So I'd rather draw some gas here. Maybe get a Nissa to really put the push this over the edge. All right. We'll get, ooh, Oko is a nice one. Okay, so we'll get the Paradise Druid down just in case if we just want to start getting aggressive with Oko next turn. Okay, and I think that's what we're gonna do here with not having the six land to guarantee this I think I just want to get the engine going and then uh, attack with paradise druid 
and then do another setup turn next turn, and then kind of, uh, um, and then start playing big spells. So we're on a trajectory right now to start playing Agent or Krasis, not next turn, but the following turn. I think that's better just to uh, get the value going with Oko. What do you got, Jonathan? What do you got? Okay. Okay. I was going to say Teferi would make this a little awkward for me, but I think this is reasonable the way it stands. Okay, so we are going to start getting aggressive and just really hope they don't have Realm Cloak Giant because then there's kind of not much we can do. We just have to play into it, which is kind of a bummer, but we're not going to play around it. Just because we're probably going to lose that game if they have it regardless. So I think it's one of those times where you just want to go all in. Okay, that's not a, that's not a Wrath of God. Now we get to just draw some cards. Or even Agent a land if we were feeling froggy. I think that'd be a little too froggy, but... Okay. So what about one, two, three, four, five... Six, just a crisis for four. I think I like that. Draw two cards. Now, I think we will just turn. I definitely want to attack here. But now the question is to turn my food into uh, a creature. Yeah, because we can cast agent regardless. So we're just going to. Actually, no, we're going to do it to the goose. Because if they do have Wrath, then we can still attack with this food token next turn and we're not like completely dead. All right, we'll get in there for six. Now we're presenting lethal. So they kind of have to have a Realm Cloak Giant um, or it'll be a little rough for them. So they have six unique lands. So Field is gonna be active. All right, what do you got, Jonathan? What do you got? Lotus Box Boy is always coming in with nice, fresh ideas, and uh, the Golos one, I have to say, is no exception. Okay, so I think we can win. So they're at six, huh? Yeah, okay, so since this is pro blue, they're just dead. So one, two, three, four, shifting, haste. Boom! All right, going to game three against the awesome. The awesomest of the Rossimus. I hope he doesn't hear that because that was a horrible joke. I still don't like the fight cards. Um, Veil, somewhat considering that, but I don't think it's good enough. Um, I would rather just cast giant things. Disdainful Stroke is awesome. I wish I had another one in this matchup instead of a negate. But on the draw, I do want to be a little more interactive. So I think I am going to bring in another negate for Voracious. Maybe get their Securitas route and uh, be able to stem their ramp a little bit. Uh, that'll buy us enough time to start casting more meaningful spells um, against this Golos deck. Golos will win if given time because they go a little bit higher or over the top from us. Ooh, I think I'm going to keep this. The ceiling on this hand is kind of through the roof. AK, if we draw a land in the top two cards, we have Oko, and even worst case, we have a Paradise Druid on turn two. And then we still have two mana. It's not great, and we are gonna get punished if we don't get a land here, but we do play a lot of land, so I'm gonna risk this one. On the play, of course you ship this back, but our hand is so powerful if we were to get what we want here. That's a toughie. Um, I think we risk it here and get the goose down because if we top deck a land, turn two Oko is absolutely busted. So I think it's worth the risk. And even if we don't get a land, it's Paradise Druid land. And then, uh, ooh, hello. So now, now we do have a thought between just going Paradise Druid. Nah, we're gonna get Oko. Oko's so good. Oko. And now we should set up for a Nyssa almost for sure here in two turns. Won't be able to do it next turn, unfortunately, but... All right, Beanstalk Giant, I can imagine. Yep. Let's see if we would have got the land. We wouldn't have, so I'm glad we made this play. Now... 
We can only cast one creature here, no matter what we do. So we might as well go Paradise Druid. Yeah, we're gonna go Paradise Druid. Temple. So if they were to counter our thing or Wrath our board, then we're really gonna want this. And even if they don't, we might kind of want this. So we're gonna keep this on top. Now we are going to eat up this food though and get in there. We're even gonna get in there with the goose. The goose is officially loose. There's no reason not to, we're not gonna block, but don't do that at home, kids. Oh no, don't, don't giant me. No! That was mean. Okay, well, back to the drawing board. Food, this, this, Nissa next turn. Do we need a land? I don't think so. Because we're going to play Nissa no matter what, and we have enough for that. So if we draw land, we're okay with it. But there's no reason to put it on top because we don't need it for our next turn. It doesn't give us the chance to age it. Ooh, we love that. We love Once Upon a Time right now instead of playing another bomb like Golos or something. Ooh, and a non... Uh, um, not the same land, so that's great. Don't have a counter spell? Sweet. All right, so we want to do the non-forest here. All right, now we're going to make another elk. Let's get him in there. <clears throat> Play another land, digging for gas. That's not gas. We'll ship it back. All right, one, two, three, four, five unique lands. So this could be like a value crisis for four and we're okay with that. We're probably just gonna Voracious Hydra here. We might be pretty close to game here. Okay, so we could Agent to steal that. I don't like that, I think we just wanna fight. So, all right, so even, I don't think we're even gonna die to Wrath at this point. So this goose is free because it gives this one extra mana. So we're gonna go like this, play this. Food. Now we're gonna go like this, this, this. All right, so this is for seven. This is for five, that's big enough to fight this. Fight. Okay. Now we want to... Oh, uh, we can't get rid of another blue source in case they have a wrath. So we're gonna go like this and we're going to... Um, make this bigger, or we make our food bigger. So, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, they're one away from lethal here. Alright, so we'll go like this. I invite you to change your way. Attack. You're at 1. Better have a wrath, and then it just doesn't matter. That should be game! Agent, that's not enough. Not enough, Jonathan. Not enough, I'm afraid, unless you got something else. Well, I mean, could have a land here. Get two zombies. Yeah, land with two zombies would be quite good. Okay. <clears throat> All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so if we agent take this back, Agent, take that back. Yeah, this has got to be game. One, two, three, four. Oh, I don't have Nyssa. Ooh. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we can't actually cast this right now. Maybe are they dead anyways? One, two, three. Okay, so five attack. Oh, yeah, they're just dead on board. Just dead on board. Okay. Um... Exchange control of this and their land. 
Boom! <laughs> that was a nice one. That was a, that was a really close game. Really close game, but we saw the power of Nissa kind of take over. And the slow draw from Jonathan um, on that game without a ramp spell. Um, I think the key turn was when he played once upon a time. It wasn't a Golos or it wasn't something big. Even though he did have the turn four Wrath that was like really backbreaking to us. Didn't have the follow up and uh, we were able to capitalize. So stay tuned for our second round. And welcome to round two here with Simic Ramp, Simic Food Ramp here. I am on the draw. This hand is good though, we're gonna keep this. We have a little bit of d interaction with Brazen Borrower as well as two big creatures and the Goose. The Goose is indeed loose. All right, so we're going to play the Gilded Goose. We will say go. What do we got, Robber of the Rich, huh? We do have more cards, that's for show. See, so it must have been a land. We wanted that land. I guess the forest wouldn't have been that good. Okay, so we can go Hydra for two. I think it's just gonna be best to uh, Brazen Bar, maybe? Maybe not, maybe just Temple. Well, okay, so how about this? We can go Voracious Hydra for one and double it, and then it's a blocker for this. I think that's worth it right now. So while well, this looks a little underwhelming, and it is, but stopping the card advantage uh, engine while getting cards out of her hand, I think is sweet, because then not only are we, you know, not having an insanely powerful turn, but now next turn we can go Brazen Bower a Bounce um, to interact and then, uh, or make a food token. So I think this is reasonable. Okay, no blocks. Okay, so we want to be able to have a chance at casting Nissa next turn. We're going to see what we're going to find. We're going to get a land. So with, with that being said, we're going to just pass and make a food because we can play Nissa next turn. Untap and have Brazen Borrower active. That card is messed up when you get that combo. Got our land. Okay, sure. I mean... I guess it was pretty important for them to mill us there. Okay, okay. Well, we get to kind of blow them out here. All right, Brazen Borrower to bounce that. Oh yeah, not bad. Okay, now we have a Wicked Wolf. Not very good right now, I won't lie. Three to equipped, and this is hitting for eight then. It's pretty good. We could bounce it. So we're first going to see once again what uh, what we're cooking with. We're going to get that land. So we're going to say go, and we can either make a food or bounce this if need be. Yep. Okay. I think what we're going to do here is actually bounce the ember thing. All right, bounce this, and I don't think this uh, robber gets active then. Nice, because then we get to cast the Nissa, so that's pretty huge. All right. Nissa, who shakes thy world. No, we're just going to want to do the forest to make food. So we might have to double block. Okay, so yeah, they can play this and strap. So that's eight damage. So we will have to have a blocker. So we're going to leave back Voracious Hydra. And then we can Wicked Wolf this. So yeah, we're, we're sitting pretty good here. We're not going to fall for just losing the game on the spot. We will block. Yep. Strap it. All right, so we take five. But now we get a gigantic crisis, and we can gain some life if need be. Okay, I was like, that kind of gave me a mini uh, panic attack there. I was like, am I dead? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now this crisis will trade with that. Five, six, seven, oh, for only six. So no, it won't. Um, still worth it. Well, we can do it for eight. 
Maybe we should. All right, I think we will. So with that being the case, we are going to get in our free damage. If they deal with Krasis, we just die, but how do they deal with an 80? Would be my question. Maybe it's safer to just Wicked Wolf this away. I mean, it's definitely safer. And then like value crisis. All right, I think this is just uh, arguably safer play. We'll sacrifice this, kill that. And now actually I think I am going to just say go because we gain more life with the food. So if they do have a burn spell or something, we can just gain life and get out of range there. Wait, did I not activate Nissa? Oh my God. <laughs> I was so in my head about uh, the Wicked Wolf, I could completely missed that. All right, so that is gonna cause a problem. Now we can go like this. First strike is going to deal it damage, so we're gonna have to create a food. Yeah, that was uh, that was my bad. All right, so we'll gain three, we'll go back down to two. We still are just wildly in control of this game. That helps us even more. So, Krasis for four to gain two. Yeah, that seems good. Now we're gonna hold back two four fours just to make sure we don't die. Okay, now maybe not. Yeah, now we are going to actually get in there with the Wicked Wolf and this to make it a two turn clock. Yeah, yeah. Not activating Nissa for a turn. I don't recommend that, kids at home. I don't recommend that. <laughs> Always good to slow down a bit when you uh when you have it within reach. Okay. That might be a haster. Yeah, we're still completely fine here. So we're gonna take two from this. We'll take this does not trample, no. Nope. So we're gonna take four damage, but we're gonna get to gain from the egg to blockers. And we could even block with uh, the goose as well, but I don't think it's time to give away the goose because we're gonna take, we're gonna take two, four damage, four damage here, that's okay. So block, create a food, sack, live, Ouch, ouch. Okay, now I uh, have lethal. Yeah, I believe I just have lethal here. Three, four, five, six. Voracious Hydra for four. Fight, win. So even though we uh, made a bonehead play there and didn't activate with Nyssa, Still got there. I think we played that game pretty well other than that. Um, very kind of danced around him. And you see how the goose can do a little goose dance and, uh, you know, really help you when you're in these kind of, uh, um, when you're in these kind of race scenarios. The goose kind of does it all. Okay, so Gruel, hello. That's four Aether Gus. We have him here for a reason. It's not necessarily for Gruel because it's not very heavily played, but <laughs> it is good. It is really good. Now, uh, Disdainful Stoke for Questing Beast is interesting. I don't like Brazen Bar, even though it was kind of a blowout that game. One Oko on the draw I think is reasonable to take out. I don't even think I want anything else. Agent is a little too slow. And then everything else is pretty situational. So we're just gonna go four Gust for three Braze and one Oko. You'll notice in me playing this deck, uh, 
Brazen Borrow comes out a lot, and people are always going to say, why take it out, you know, why have it in the deck if you take it out so often? And I mean, there's arguments to that, but it is very good at a game one card of being able to stem away unknown threats, um, as well as still good in its relevant slots uh, post board, like Green Black Henge, it's an all star, um, and, and other matchups. Okay, so this hand's unplayable, of course. Sounds okay. It's not great. So I think we will just get rid of a Voracious Hydra here. I do like just fighting things with Voracious Hydra. Maybe Nissa is actually worse. I think it is. We're just going to try to win off Voracious Hydras. They're just so big. It's hard for them to deal with. Looks like our opponent is on the mulligan to six. Okay, Forest. All right, great draw on our part. Another land is just what we need, so we'll say go. And now we have the choice between Aether Gusting or Leafkin Druid. We're definitely going to Leafkin in the face of that. Well, okay, I shouldn't say uh, for sure because Paradise Druid is just as good, if not better. I do not want it to die. And here's a very popular play pattern that works for this game is turn two mana creature into turn three, another mana creature, and then interaction, either in the form of Brazen Bar or Aether Gust, one of my favorite sequences from this deck. It's beautiful, just beautiful. Okay, War Boss, not beautiful. But you know what is beautiful? Killing said War Boss next turn. You know that play I just mentioned? Throw it out the table. We're not doing it. We are casting a Voracious Hydra for two. Fight, 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 fight. Let's get this war boss out of there. Now what we're really afraid of is Questing Beast. Questing Beast pe pumping Pelt Collector here is quite strong. That's less strong. We're not as concerned about that. Okay, that is still, you know, big because uh, dealing us that much damage, but... Ooh, okay. Now I kind of want to just Leafkin Druid. Ah, this is close. I could just play a Gigantic Hydra. Ooh, yeah, I can activate Castle of Erinbrook this turn. That's too good. Okay, yeah, this play is insane. Activate Castle. Don't forget about your castles, y'all. They're busted. Are right, we going to do this for four and fight. So now not only can this now block Questing Beast, but it can now shut down the entire board. We're gonna say go just to uh, just to be safe here. But I mean that was excellent, Domri. Solid, solid magic card. Killing that also solid. Not that big of a deal though. Okay, now we could just do it again. Could just do it again and then kill Domri. I think that's just way too strong. Castle. One, two, three, four. Yeah, our opponent knows. Knows that that is strong. Kill Domri. Don't have the shock, please. That would be a little lame. I think they do. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Questing Beast would trade for it. That's going to probably become a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. Okay, so now we're just going to play all our things and probably just put this on top. Attack for eight. No real reason to, actually. Well, okay, let's do this. We're going to get a little aggressive. See if they double block. They do not. With that being the case... I think I am just going to go this. Aether Gust this right away. Now they have to choose if they want it. We can't do this during their turn because of the whole hexproof thing. Putting that on top. We're not too afraid of that. And then another Leafkin. Now, I mean, we're in the Hydride Crisis waiting room. Haste, huh? I mean, we're just going to block here and soak up damage, I think. All right, that's not fair, but castle, seven, eight. Our opponent's probably gonna be mad. We will just fight this one too. <laughs> 
That was kind of mean of us, I have to say. Uh, who would have guessed giant voracious hydras are good against gruel monsters? Stay tuned for our third and final round. Let's see if we can get that 3-0. And welcome to our third and final round here with Simic Ramp. Okay, so we were on the draw, unfortunately, but this hand is fine. We have a nice piece of interaction as well as a ramp spell that can't be interacted with. So I do love leading on Paradise Druid. Oh, black, white. What do we got here? Knights. I'm a firm believer that this deck is very bad, but you know what? It can sneak up on you out of nowhere here, so we'll see. We get a nice turn next turn of Voracious Hydring, a Corpse Knight, or whatever knight may follow. We shall see. And then into Nyssa. Chef's keys. The keys of the chef. All right. No blocks. What you got? What you got? No follow-up? I don't recommend that. Now, what do they probably have? I can't think of any two-mana spell that they would have. And I could be wrong. I mean, they could have, like, Noxious Grass. That seems like a stretch, but... We're just gonna go like this for two. If they deal with it, sure. All right, we're going to fight. Oh, that's cute. That's cute, all right, that kills our Hydroid, or our uh, Voracious Hydra. Not that big of a deal, realistically, but that was cute. And now this does not have Death Touch, so this is just a 3-1 now. Ooh, Mardu Knight. All right, making them a little bigger. I think I'm just gonna be a fan of Nyssa and then just try to block, but maybe, maybe not now. This is a kind of a lot of power. Maybe it's just Voracious Hydra for three. Ooh, never mind. Castle of Ehrenbrook makes it for four and that puts it over the top. Cause now not only does this kill the Knights, but this can basically block anything here. Or this will be able to block the Paragon. So we'll kill this. Get some both in there. So I think this could just be another Paragon, but I'm okay with this trading. Sure, take two. Now if we top deck a blue source, we can Krasis. Eh, maybe that's just not better. Depending on what their follow-up play is, I mean, Nissa is just gonna shake the world here. All right, so we'll go Nissa. We will we'll go with the forest here. We're gonna attack. We'll see if they wanna block. If they do, I mean, it's okay. I think I'd prefer if they didn't, but I think it's reasonable either way. All right, so now we're just gonna play Leaf Kindred. Now, if they go the night thing that pumps your team, we'll have to chump block and that's a little awkward. Or the Anthem artifact. Any Anthem effect, basically. But if they just don't, if, if they just bring those creatures into Nyssa, just to me, we don't care. We're gonna cast a giant Krasis. We're gonna gain so much life here. Nothing that like fire bolts us for six. You know, there's uh, the thing that can shoot us for two right now, but yeah, there we go. That's the card, but just doesn't matter. The Krasis is gonna go f way over the top here. So it just has lifelink, so we're going to attack first. I'm not going to attack with the other one just because it's the same amount of damage. And I want to be able to do this. Six. Now we want to untap before we use the Leafkin. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. So Krasis for eight, gains us four, goes up to eight, but ooh, then we're actually dead if they draw a Murderous Rider. So we can't have that, so we're going to have to play a Leaf Druid as well. So we're gonna go like this. Eight, so we can do this for six now. Still plenty good. It would be a little greedy to uh, just put the game in their hands 
if they top deck a murderous rider and that's that would just be a bad play so now i can safely go down to five because i'm getting another hexproof blocker and then we'll ship it now if they draw murderous rider they kill crisis we get to block two creatures take two and then not win next turn but basically okay okay so now we get to go wow okay we just get to do it all um in which way do we want to start i mean our draw is just going to be so good guess we'll start with wicked wolf we're gonna fight the we want it to live so we're gonna fight the flyer sure at this point it just kind of doesn't matter but all right then we're gonna go up with this one two three four five We'll, bring, we'll play another Nyssa. We're just flexing at this point. Straight flexing. We'll bring this uh, island alive. Um, now we're going to get in there. We're just bringing it all. Everything we can. Okay. Um, don't think we care about that, but you know what? Why not? We are going to activate Brazen Borrower here, bounce this. Really doesn't matter, but just because it's about to die. All right, now we can play Oko. Play an Oko. Make some food. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. All right, so Knights, Mardu Knights. I don't have much for this deck except Veil of Summer. I think this is just generally a very good matchup. I don't like Brazen Borrower that much. Um, I think it's just Brazen Borrower for Veil. It's really all we want. Otherwise, our cards just do exactly what we want in this matchup. Um, we don't need to go bigger with Agent. Um, Shifting Ceratops is not necessary, and we don't want any of this. All our sideboard cards are pretty much for when Wicked Wolf and Voracious Hydra are not good cards. You have to bring in something, like against the Esper Egg Stacks deck. That's a matchup where you just have to take those out and bring in other hate cards. So against this one, we just don't care too much. All right, so on the draw here, let's see if we can get that 3-0. 3-0. 3-0. Okay, we're gonna keep. It's not insane or anything, but it's fine. All right, scry. No, thank you. Now we're looking for payoff. We are looking for X spells, please, or Wicked Wolves. Wicked Wolves are nice. Okay, that's a great card. All right, so is that. But we already have one, so that's not the best. But we're probably gonna go this and uh, go Oko with Counterspell backup. I'll block. Ooh, actually, no, I'm not gonna. Paragon right now is quite annoying, so no blocks. Okay. Now we're probably gonna have to block next turn, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it's time to get Oko down. Gonna make food. Unfortunately, that's not great right now, but it will start making blockers soon. Plus, we have a veil to interact a little bit if they try to kill it. But otherwise, we are gonna take a hit here. We are gonna take a decent hit. And hopefully we can bounce back, but this this one might be a little tough. Wouldn't see what they're thinking about. I would just bring them all in. Oh, I love that they're attacking Oko. All right, we're just gonna let Oko die here because we do just have another one, which is gonna be the follow-up we'd much rather do anyways. So yeah, let's just let Oko fall. I don't want to chump block. Yeah, I uh, I didn't necessarily care about that. All right, my turn. Okay, so now we can go Oko plus Leafkin and make this into a blocker. Seems pretty relevant to me. 
Yeah, let's do that. Food blocker. Leafkin, and then hope this Krasis will carry some weight here. But like I said, we're, we're pretty far behind. This could be a murderous rider. Now that they have a second block. Veil vale Summer feels okay here. Maybe we still just want Brazen Borrower. On the play, I think we're going to do that because we just doesn't care. We just don't care about the other card, but. All right, where's it coming? Yep. Sure. Yep. Okay, so. Oko will fall. Unless we chump with Leafkin, I guess. Okay, so. I guess I want to go like this and probably kill this. Or I could go like this and it takes four. And I could chump that later. I think I'm just going to let it die. Yeah, we're just going to let it die. Unfortunately, Oko did not look very great so far. This had a little bit too fast of a, of a draw. I'm pretty sure Paragon only hits a knight, but I could be wrong, yeah. Nissa, Hello. So we could go Nissa plus Krasis for four. I think we actually would rather go like this. Six, seven, eight. We can Krasis for six. But then if it dies, we're likely just dead. Maybe it's best to just go Nissa, make a 3-3, three, three, and then hold up Veil. I think that's it. And then we have two chump blockers with Leafkin. This is going to generate more mana anyways. Now, we're not going to attack. Just going to do one of our lands that doesn't produce double and just go for a gigantic crisis next turn. Yeah, I think that's best. Okay. Yeah, I mean, their board is just ginormous right now, so this is terrifying, but... We're just gonna hope Nissa lives. Yep. God, these creatures are just gigantic. All face, okay. Blockers here and here would be my first reactions. What about here and here? Does that keep me alive? Nine, 10, 11. What if I don't block that? What if I block here? Take nine, 14, 15. Ugh. Go to one. Ugh. I think I like it more. And we're dead to that knight card anyway, so we can't play around that. But I think I would rather eat up five damage while I can. This, uh, this feels bad, but I need a little bit of wiggle room with all these one ones. Like I said, I think we're just dead, but. Don't have any wrath effect to get us back in it from here. Yep. Okay. See if this is even enough. Five. Six. I think we just have to do a crisis for five. Okay. Go like this. We will animate this. 
three blockers. One, two, three, take five, ten. Yeah, we're very dead. All right, game three for all the marbles coming in. Now, on the pl this veil looked bad. It looked really bad. Like, if this was Brazen Barrer, we might have had a chance of winning. So, I think on the play, I'm going to just go back to what works. Play some Brazen. I'll keep one veil in. It could be a timely veil, but otherwise, I just want to... My deck has a good matchup against it, so I might as well just play... Like, there's, there's multiple matchups where this deck just doesn't sideboard. And most people think that's really weird, but when you have a great matchup, no need to change. You're built to beat these kind of decks, so... Boo! That's a mulligan. Alright, that's a keep. That is a keep. Now, what to bottom? Probably Brazen Borrower. Brazen Bottomer. Now, Goose first? I think so. Because if we top deck Oko, it's just too busted. Then we just almost win the game on the spot against this deck. Okay, Knight. <clears throat> Ooh, that's pretty good too. Now we get to go Druid, and then next turn we can go Wicked Wolf. We can't block this though because of Paragon. Normally you can block this on turn two all day. Okay, well now they, they could have got a free point of damage in because I would not have blocked. Okay, or just how about a turn three Nissa? Turn three, this is the only way to do turn three Nissa is what we did, which is impressive. All right, so we actually don't want to attack because it just uh, it just trades for Worthy Knight here. All right, we hope they don't have uh, Murderous Rider now. Now is where we really wish we had. Uh, yeah, we got to let that happen. Pump? Oh, yeah, they're so dead. They're dead. They're dead. Okay, so we just get to go like this. Kill that knight. Fight. Fight the knight, fight the knight. I'll take another one. All right, now let's go like this. Now it's just trivial from this point. We just get to go nuts. The beat. I mean, this was just, this is just the, some of the draws this deck has. I mean, it is the stone blade nuts we have by going turn three Nissa, but the deck does it. Deck does it a fair amount of times and they mostly concede when you do that. So, woo, woo, first standard back. First standard back on arena with uh, Thrones of Eldraine's and we get that 3-0. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. It feels good to be home and you best believe we're gonna be putting Modern on the shelf here for a little bit and focusing just on breaking Eldraine standard, Eldraine standard week in and week out. Uh, this was really fun. Glad to be back on arena and on standard. Stay tuned for the deck tech and welcome to Simic Ramp deck tech here. All right, so you know, th those were three pretty good matches. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, this is kind of how my testing process has been so far. I'm just kind of destroying people uh, with this deck. And I mean, I, I think it's insanely powerful. It's playing a lot of new toys that people aren't maybe quite ready for. People are starting to catch on. And decks are starting to go over the top a little bit more. And, uh, you know, those over the top decks like Golos, like uh, um, Esper Stacks, these decks that kind of just don't care about uh, putting creatures into play, um, besides infinite zombies, but that doesn't count, uh, tend to have good matchups against us. So if those become more prevalent, it's a little bit more of a scary deck choice. But if that's not the case, I think this deck is busted. So we'll start by the choices uh, that were chosen by uh, one of the best standard Magic players, if not the best, my older brother, Brad Nelson. Um, this is a Brad Nelson special. Even some of the sideboarding changes uh, Brad helped me with, um, um, you know, as, a, as a, a nice, helpful, good older brother should, is help his little brother. Uh, but we'll get to the choices that we made here. For Gilded Goose, it's the only way that you can play turn three Nissa in this format whatsoever. And I mean, that's just insane. Starting with a turn three Nissa, the amount of games you win are astronomically high. Um, then we move on to uh, our two drops. We got Leafkin Druid and Paradise Druid. Those 12 cards are kind of the soul of the deck. It is a ramp deck. Um, now you don't want to play Gross Spiral because the card just is not quite good enough. Um, even though creatures do have vulnerability to being destroyed and then, you know, you're, 
you're just delayed and maybe you were relying on that land, that becomes a bit of a problem. But it's uh, what you have to do here. Then we got our Voracious Hydra and our Hydroid Crisis here. These are our payoff cards that scale excellently. So Voracious Hydra, even on turn three after you played one of your ramp spells to make a four or five trampler is great. Or being able to kill one of their early night creatures or something, something like we saw in our last round is awesome. Being able to Crisis for two, not great, but sometimes you have to do it. And then when you can ever cast these cards for six or eight or 10 or seven or eight, what, seven or nine, doesn't matter. They become just insane. So when I say scales, it means that they're good at basically every part of the game, but they get incrementally better. And that's just uh, what ramp is all about. Now we get to our new toys. Brazen Bower and Oko come in at the three mana slot. Being able to go turn two Oko on the play is kind of like going turn three Nissa. It's just insane. You are pulling so much advantage so often and you just really kind of control the game with how powerful the three abilities are. All three abilities are insane. Um, and it works quite well with Wicked Wolf, which we'll get to in a second. Brazen Bower, Borrower is probably the weakest card in the deck. I think it's good. I don't think it's, it has the best home. And I do think there's a little bit of overratedness over Brazen Bower. I think the card is strong. And being able to go Nissa, tick up on a breeding pool, and then be able to bounce something, busted. Absolutely busted. But I side the card out a lot. I haven't found anything that I wanted to change enough to... Uh, put something else in that slot. So for now, we're keeping up Brazen Borrower, but if any innovators out there feel like they want to make some changes to the deck, that would be the first card to go for me. Um, yeah. Wicked Wolf is a card that I would never cut, though. This is a card that has been surprising me since I played it. Being able to fight a, a creature early on, as well as, like, kill a questing beast if you have a food, as well as just the card can't be killed if you have a food engine, like Oko or Gilded Goose. I mean, outside of ways to remove it, like with white base enchantments and stuff like that, the card just can't be killed. Then we have our all-star, Nissa Who Shakes the World, dominated last standard, and his shockingly come in to dominate this standard. Big shock, right? And then the only notable change is we have Castle Garen Bridge coming up uh, in our land slot, being able to turn five mana into six mana. It's not insanely relevant, except whenever you have five mana to be able to Voracious Hydra for four, that comes up a decent amount, as well as like castling um, when you have five, five, six lands, uh, being able to make a five, five crisis instead of four, four, not, not insanely relevant just because you don't draw an extra card, you don't gain an extra life, but four, four versus five, five body is sometimes relevant, contextual to the game. Then we'll move to the sideboard. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. We got a uh, three veil of summers here. A phenomenal card. Great at uh, stopping black base removal, as well as these blue base counter spells or like bant, mat, bant mass manipulation style decks. Whenever you can, you know, shut down a mass manipulation, but for one mana that also draws you a card, you're so ahead on tempo that you're probably going to win that game. Four Aether Gus. You saw it right. That's four. Because all our problem matchups where we want to interact early are usually green or red based. So aggressive red decks, Gruul, um, even Abzan it's pretty strong against. Um, you know, the mirrors, you want them on the draw. Um, uh, really, it, it has a lot of applications. Uh, it comes in a lot of matchups. It comes in in higher numbers when you're on the draw because you're. this is a deck that doesn't interact early that well so being able to aether gust and tempo swing your opponent is excellent sometimes we transfer into a blue green kind of tempo based flash deck that still has the ramp elements uh when we're up against an aggressive deck on the draw now we'll shift to our counter spell magic uh or our counter magic in Disdainful Stroke and Negate. These numbers, I was not so positive about whether it should be two stroke or one negate or two negate, one stroke. Um, still not 100% sure. I'm kind of leaning on actually switching it um, because Disdainful Stroke, I think, is really good right now and being able to counter um, big creatures is sometimes relevant. 
Then we got three Shifting Ceratops, great against control, great against any deck where we just want to be a little faster, you know, good against Golos as well. And of course, blue-green flash deck, tempo style decks, basically can't beat the card. And I think that matchup is close to slightly unfavored, so it's a card we definitely want. And then two Agent of Treacheries, I'm also considering a third for this because just in the ramp mirror, any deck that's trying to go big as well, being able to steal their best threat is insanely good. But all right, everybody, that's going to be it for me and Simic Ramp brought to us by our very own Brad Nelson here, my older brother. Stay tuned next week for some more Eldraine Standard, and we'll see if we can break it all over again. See you then.